that's going to stay there. Um, gosh, you know, when God's presence comes like that, mm. like it has tonight, it's just an overwhelming sense of the Holy Spirit moving in our hearts and, and just opening up, maybe opening up areas of our hearts that perhaps we've struggled with, areas maybe where, where we've, we've kept close to him. Um, and, you know, but just that gentleness that we felt tonight and when, when the Holy Spirit comes and he starts to just touch, and touch those things in us. And, and it's interesting that, that, um, that Darren talked about his testimony um, of, of feeling that God was leading him to repent of unforgiveness. Because that's, um, that's what I want to talk about tonight. Um, I don't know where God's going to lead this, but I'm just going to go with it, okay? <laughs> um, because to be honest, I feel quite undone tonight by what's been happening tonight in the worship already. Um, and um, but I want to talk about the battle for our minds in the whole area of unforgiveness. You know, and, and, it, and it is a battle. You know, it's a real battle for us. Unforgiveness causes a, a, a torment in our thoughts. You know, it, it, it overwhelms us, it, it grows, it grows in us, it grows like a cancer. And it begins with a tiny seed. A seed of unforgiveness becomes a root of bitterness, which grows to a tree which sucks the life out of us, basically. Um, and, it, and it's an area that I struggle with and I'm ongoing with because God hasn't finished with me in that area. But I want to share just a, um, a testimony of how God dealt with something that was such a root of unforgiveness in me. Um, that there was no way that I could have dealt with that on my own. I needed, I needed God. And we, and we need God for this. You know, we, we can't do it ourselves. Um, so if I just read this a minute. Unforgiveness is a sin. It is a sin that causes bitterness in our life. The Bible warns us about bitterness. Hebrews 12, 15 says, Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. And we've been sensing, we've been feeling the, the outrageous grace of God tonight here. Yeah. Lest any root of bitterness spring up, causing trouble. And by this we become defiled. Unforgiveness also creates a hardened heart. The hardened heart feels anger, resentment, bitterness and hatred towards the offender. Left unchecked, unforgiveness and the bitterness that comes with it can cause us to die inside. Bitter through and through, incapable of experiencing love, good, beauty or joy. And it can hinder us from receiving the love of God. So I'm just going to ask Leanne if she would just put up Romans 12, verse 14 to 20. So what I'd like 
us to look at tonight. I've, I've, I've got three R's. I've got recognise, release, which also involves repentance and restore. So we're going to be looking at those three, three things. So this is what God says to us that we're to do for our, with our enemies, with those that we struggle with. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Amen. Do not be conceited. Amen. So this. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not revenge, my, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy's hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heat burning coals on his head. I just want to tell you just a, um, very quickly, just a, a little, quite funny story to do with this, to actually to do with this verse. And um, it concerns a, a dear friend of ours who, um, when we were in London, um, we we were able to, to pray with her, and, and when we led her to the Lord, and Anna was um, was what you would call a, a fiery lady. <laughs> um, she, before she knew the Lord, she would fight anyone basically um, who had a go at her. Um, but didn't matter if it was a man or a woman, um, and. She had a neighbour who was had been really, really quite nasty to her sister, um, and her sister had actually had a fight with this neighbour, and Anna was ready to go round and um, have a go at her, and um, so. She was telling me all about this, and she just said, I basically just want to go and punch your lights out, you know. <laughs> and, and I sort of showed her this scripture, and I, you know, and I, I just said to her, um, if possible, can you, can you pray for her? You know, because if, if you pray, if you're praying to someone, you can't stay angry at them. It's very difficult to pray for somebody and pray a blessing on someone and stay angry. So, anyway, I read her this verse about um, leave room for the wrath of God and, you know, feed, feed your enemy and, you know, basically be nice, try and bless them. So the next week, um, I met up with Anna and I just said to her, how have you got on praying for your neighbour? So she said, Oh, she said, it's been great. So I said, oh, good. So she said, yeah, she said, I picture her in my mind. She said, and then I picture all these hot coals on her head. <laughs> <laughs> and, she, and she said, and I pray, keep keeping them on, Lord, and make them hotter than ever. <laughs> and she said, I feel so much better, she said. <laughs> So I've been able to, to, to explain to her that's not what this scripture means. <laughs> you know, it doesn't mean literally that God's going to pour fiery hot coals. You know, but what it does mean is, is that if you if you pray for them, if you bless them, then it leaves room for God 
you know, God to have the justice, whatever he, whatever he needs to do, but also that it releases you and it releases that person. You release that person, you know, for God to be able to convict, you know, that person where he needs to convict them. Yeah, so that was just, um, that was just a, a, a funny story, but let's go back to them. Um, so God tells us in Scripture to, that He He searches our hearts. You know, Psalm 139, and I think um, Darren mentioned some part Psalm 139 about God searching our hearts. Yeah, I've been reading it for the last few days actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, and and He says in in 23 to 24, you know. Um, search my heart, David prays, and he says, Search my heart, O oh God, and see if there's any offensive way in me. Um, so we need to ask God to search our hearts because often, you know, we, we, can, we may know that there's unforgiveness, we may know that we're angry at people, but sometimes we don't. Sometimes we've buried it so deep and for so long that. We're not, we don't even know it's there still, but it's there and it's grown and, it, and it's, you know, it's eating away at us and it's sucking the life out of us. Um, and we need to ask the Holy Spirit to search our hearts. Um, you know, Darren said that in his testimony, you know, he didn't know that that was there, you know, until God convicted him of it, you know, the Holy Spirit convicted him. So that's the first thing we need to do is recognise. We recognise by asking the Holy Spirit to search our hearts and to show us if there is unforgiveness there, if there's hurt, you know, if there's pain, uh, and there's people that we need, we need to forgive. Acknowledge there's a need for us to forgive. It's not easy not easy to do it and sometimes we have to keep doing it you know we have we have to do it over and over again sometimes but in order to be healed and free and released ourselves we need to make a choice to release the hurt and pain that's been caused we need to give it to Jesus with all our emotions that are tied up with that, yeah. with all the pain, with all the anger. Sometimes we need to do that with someone we trust. Yeah. It's a difficult thing to do sometimes on our own. Sometimes we need to find someone that we can sit down, that we trust, and will pray with us and stand with us. So I just want to share um, just a, a, a a testimony really of how I was able to let go of an unforgiveness um, towards somebody who um, who I held in my heart for, for, men, for many years and basically I wanted revenge I wasn't, I wasn't just angry I wanted revenge and I wanted God to avenge me um, um, and it's to do with my it was to do with my, my ex-husband and um, who systematically um, abused me for many years and also my family now I knew that that was there in me, I knew that I couldn't let go of it. I tried, I tried, you know, many times. I, I, I prayed, and I, you know, I'd say to God, help me, forgive him, help me, help me to, you know, to let him go, help me to release this. And then one Sunday morning, we were um, in our old church in Elton, and we had a visiting speaker, um, and he was a, a hospital chaplain. And he, um, talked to us about a guy called Keith. No, my ex-husband was called Keith. 
and he talked to us about a guy called Keith who was dying, literally, and um, he didn't have very long to live. He was dying of cancer, um, and it wasn't long, actually, after this happened. Um, sorry, this this wasn't long after I'd discovered that my ex-husband had also died of cancer. And he talked about this guy, Keith, and he said, I went to see him, and he said, I wanted to tell him about Jesus, because I knew that he didn't have very long. And he said, he turned around and he said to me, God could never forgive me for the things I've done. There's no forgiveness for me. He said, I know where I'm going. Mm. And this guy was able to say to him, if you ask Jesus to forgive you, you can know right now, you can know now that you're going to be, you're going to go to heaven. You're going to be with Jesus. There's nothing that Jesus can't forgive. And I sat there and the tears just ran down my face and I just wept and wept and wept and wept and wept. And I prayed for the first time and I said, Jesus, I hope that Keith found you before he died. And I really meant it. And I knew in that moment that I was free. I was free not only from the hatred that I had, I was free from the unforgiveness. Um, but God was able then to come in and, and heal that heart, heal that deep, deep wound in me. He was able to take that root out. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and that just, and, and I knew it was real, because it couldn't have been, I couldn't have done it, it had to be God. And I meant it with all my heart. So yeah, so we need to release We need to release the, the heart, we need to release, we need to release the person that we're, we're wanting to forgive. So one way of, of, of doing that is to, to picture that person in front of you. We can still do it, even if the person, you know, isn't, isn't alive, we can still, we can still release, we still need to release that. We need, still need um, to release that unforgiveness. So we picture, imagine the person is, is in front of us. We then make a decision to forgive them. And then we have the justice to Jesus. Now, forgiveness isn't about saying, it doesn't matter what that person did, I'm just going to forgive. Forgiveness is about, yes, that person did hurt me. What he did, what, what, the, what they did was wrong. But I choose to give the justice to Jesus. I choose to stop wanting to take revenge. And I choose to lay it down. And I choose to allow the Holy Spirit to come and heal my heart to set me free. This is come down for me. That's great, thanks. So I was going further and further down um, Yeah, and, and that leads to repentance. That, uh, you know, that, that leads to repentance on our part from wanting that revenge. <coughs> We might need to repeat the process. We might need, because it's easy for thoughts then to creep in again and begin to take root again. So we need to keep releasing that person to God, keeping short accounts with God. And truly, we can know when we are forgiven, when we can pray for them and ask that God will forgive them. 
and bless them and where possible save them we can't stay angry at people if we're praying for them to receive God's love and forgiveness when we picture that person there's someone Jesus died for and that's what we have to remember that person is somebody that Jesus died on the cross for because he loved them so much. So, so we recognise, first of all, that there is unforgiveness, that there are things that we need to let go of, there are people we need to forgive. We release them then, we release ourselves and we not only release them, but we release ourselves from the control that that has had over us, or that person has had over, over us. And the last one is restore. Through us forgiving and releasing, we find the door is open for God's love to come in and deliver and heal us. He can heal the hurt and the pain. And sometimes we can even know that relationship restored. Jenny's an amazing, got an amazing testimony of a relationship restored, hasn't it? Um, you know, so God can do what we what we think is impossible. He can he can do it. You know, we keep releasing that and we 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 um Keep asking God, you know, to restore where we can that relationship. Sometimes it's not possible, but God calls us to be reconcilers. Yeah. Yeah. And when we're restored. We we can we can um, know God's love and His and His joy and His peace in that situation and His healing in that situation. You know, His healing in those memories. So maybe we could have, have um, Kyla come back and just have a time of just waiting on God. And maybe in that time we could just ask the Holy Spirit. Perhaps Kyla can play some. And we just have a time of just asking the Holy Spirit, is 